Welcome back into another video here on the channel. We're gonna be talking about how to 10X your money consistently with Facebook ads, specifically four separate points. I'm gonna show you a quick peek inside of an ad account that has done this inside of the last five days as of when I'm recording this video. And I just wanna break this down, talk about a few points that both individually, as someone who's run Facebook ads for a little bit over five years, I've seen huge, huge transitions on the platforms. I've seen so many different things change from iOS updates to entire facelifts on the entire Facebook platform. Because what it looks like now is completely different than what it used to and budgeting strategies that used to work don't work today and vice versa. So I've really seen that change, done tens of millions of dollars in sales just driving traffic through Facebook and now we do tens of millions per year inside of our agency for clients. So if you ever want to reference anything there and see what we do as an agency, you can always book a call using the inquiry form below. Okay, let's take a quick peek at this. I wanna show you the ad account first just so you can get a good sense of what we're looking at. This is still a slightly new store. This is a couple day timeline view of what's going on. So this is, I don't wanna say initial product testing. This is what you could kind of consider step two. This is still very much so in the beginning phase. Now, what you notice is this is not one sale. It's not two sales. A lot of people look at, oh my God, I have a 35 ROAS. And it's like, yeah, you started your ads yesterday and you have two sales. So that could be what's called popping a lucky purchase. That's what I like to call it because a lot of times you'll have something that ultimately doesn't end up panning out too well, but it does, like it looks like bonkers in the beginning but it's not consistent. And just like anything in business, there has to be proven consistency, especially with paid marketing. So this is still getting started. A lot of these only having a one, two, three sales, but in overall consistency inside of the ad account, you can see that it is producing consistency. You know, So I don't think that this store is gonna end up, I'll keep you updated over the next 30 days. This is for a client inside of our agency. I don't think it's gonna hang out at a 10. I think it'll be a six to seven. Oh no, but like, it's so funny to see. Um, you know, seeing it as a 10, which is great, a seven, there's really no difference, you know, because as long as it's super profitable and the margin is in our eyes, a 25% or higher, this is like a lot more, a lot, a lot more than that right now. Uh, as long as that margin is super healthy, then it's very scalable. And so we're going to talk about that, how to keep and maintain a high ROAS, because usually it slides down a little bit as you're scaling. That's natural. That's fine because you're doing a lot more. You can't keep your eye on it as much. And there's a lot of different things. You're, you're reaching more people inside of the audience that would be interested in buying. So I don't want to say it becomes a little bit more saturated, but certain points that we're about to talk about in this video become more relevant if you want to keep your ROAS very high. So let's go through some of these four points. Number one, testing LLAs. As soon as you start getting 100, 200, 300 sales on your pixel, there's 10, 12, 15 sales a day coming in. There's some consistency going on there. Well, now you have enough data to launch LLAs. LLAs look like audiences. They don't let you launch it without 100 purchases in a specific location. Well, that doesn't always mean that it's going to work. And a lot of people, I see this, they, they get it working with interest targeting, interest-based targeting, whether it's solo interest, stacked interests, whatever. They get that working test lookalikes as soon as they can. It doesn't work because they have 110 sales, which it can work sometimes, but it doesn't work. And then they say, oh no, we're just gonna stick with interest. And they never test back. They never go and just put a hundred bucks back into testing. And then oftentimes we'll have clients that come to us who are doing okay. And we go back and test LLAs. They're adamant about, hey, they don't work. Don't bother, just run the interest. And they start working way better than the original ads that they have running. So it's just one of those things where you have to keep testing. If it doesn't work, yeah, wait a little bit. Get some more sales. Wait five, six, seven days. Get an extra 100 sales. Try it again. So it's all about that testing. So testing LLAs is huge and different audiences for that matter. Now, inside of that, creative cycling. This is talking about the ad creative. So for an example, each of these inside of here, there's two ads underneath there. Both are video ads. Eventually, we'll start testing picture ads, we'll have carousels, we'll have animated GIFs, we'll have you know testimony-based ads, we'll have normal video ads with copyright-free music. We'll do a whole bunch of different stuff, right? There's, there's a dozen different variants you can make. But you're not gonna do that until you know the product's winning. So this right here, we can clearly tell that it's starting to work. Even though it hasn't had that many purchases, I can tell you with confidence that this will work. So now, as we're still starting to warm up the ad account, get spending limits raised and things like that, now we can shift and have the client shift a little bit their attention on, hey, let's, let's start working on the structure. Let's line up some more video ads that maybe we don't need right now, but we're gonna need them in the next few weeks. So you can start to prepare for that level of scaling. And when you have many, many ad creatives, you can now do creative cycling. You can rotate through them because what's gonna happen when you're testing your LLAs, your one, your two and your three percents are gonna be sub 10 million. 
your 1% is probably going to be 2 to 3 million. This is going to be 4 to 7, your 2. Your 3 is going to be 8 to 10, 8 to 11. So it also depends on where you're targeting. I'm talking about a US-based LLA 1%, couple million. Now, if you're doing it worldwide, that's going to be 10 to 20 million. So it can be bigger, it can be smaller, but that's the thing to keep in mind is the audience size. Because if you have a $5,000 a day CBO running on US 1%, and let's say you just so happen to have narrowed it for only mobile devices because that's you know a general enough category and that was what was working for you. Well, now that audience is probably chopped by thirty percent, so it gets a little bit smaller. A little, you know, you're, you're trimming some hairs on there, and you want to be able to cycle new creatives because you can drastically extend the lifetime of an audience if you're able to pump in new ads. But the situation you don't want to be in is where you need to do that and you don't have the ads ready. And now you're scrambling. Now you're probably spending more money to get things rushed. It's not going to be as high quality. And by the time you're actually ready to roll, it could already be dead and there's a problem anyways. So creative cycling, that's huge. Again, one of the four main points that we like to focus on as an agency and as an individual, we always make sure that that's prepared in advance when we see early signs of success like this. Okay. Number three, retargeting. Another form of ads. Obviously, this is not what this one is because it's still pretty new. But once you start getting, in my opinion, you have at least 300 sales total. You're getting 15, 20 orders a day. It becomes pretty easy to start some basic retargeting. Now, basic retargeting right away will primarily include your website visitors. Okay. Down the road, you can do other things. You can try and retarget the audiences that will be a lot smaller, like people who abandon their cart and stuff like that. So you can test those things if you really want right away. Um, I would do website visitors first, but you can do video view retargeting. There's some generalized things that just kind of captures everyone, but that's also an important point on the creative cycling. You want to have multiple creatives. Now, one quick point with retargeting, never use an original ad, okay? Original, I can't even spell today. Okay. The reason and what that means, first of all, you're never going to use an ad on a retargeting ad that you used in any sort of lookalike audience, interest-based audience, nothing on the front end. The reason for that, people have already seen it. You're retargeting them. It's kind of, I don't want to say your last shot, but you're attempting to get them back. If they didn't buy from it the first time, the odds of them buying from the same exact thing a second time of viewing it is, is lower. You would rather create something new that might even be a little bit more targeted towards retargeting. So things that we do inside of that would be saying last chance sale ends soon you know discount ends tomorrow you get the idea right so you just kind of you're almost mentioning that it's retargeting without using the word retargeting so it's kind of identifying that hey you've already seen this and that's maybe jogging the person's memory so it's just something to think about retargeting audiences are great that can help you get a super high row as a lot of people underuse this I see this being like two to 5% of people's revenue. I think it should be 20. Now we're not even at 20 because we just, for whatever reason, we're just not dialed in on retargeting. We're like 10 to 15, but I always believe that there's a lot more potential that anybody can tap into with retargeting. It's super powerful. Okay, fourth point here is boosting average order values. This might seem a little bit out of the scope of everything else that we just talked about of these three things. Boosting your average order value. This overall will give you more room to work on Facebook, obviously a higher average order value with the same CPP. It's gonna be a higher ROAS. However, this is more so from a margin perspective and making sure that as you're scaling, even if your ROAS goes down, it doesn't matter as much because there's just more wiggle room. And like I always say, the higher your average order value, the easier it's gonna to be to run ads on any paid platform. The reason for that is natural Facebook fluctuation and a few audiences dying, it's not gonna kill you or bleed you out as much because there's just more room. So you see a lot of these. A $10.30 cost per purchase is still a 666% return. So you can do the math on what the average order value is here. It's pretty healthy. And so with a healthy margin behind that, and we're still working to boost this average order value. We do that as an agency. We assist our clients with that through the use of upsells primarily, but optimizing the site, making sure that you know the price point of the product is optimized. A lot of people are selling the heck out of a product and don't realize they can increase it by 20 or 30% on the front end price extra margin. You just got to watch the conversion rate. We have a specific kind of template that we use to slowly increase the price based on how much we're spending on ads. So we do things like that, but 10xing your Facebook ads, obviously that, that's a crazy result. And I, I've never operated, this is just me being honest, I've never operated something at scale, meaning we're spending a million to make 10 million. That would be crazy. That would be ridiculous. Even my brand, that's just, you know, it's not a really sexy product. It's just a big problem solver and it works well and people love it for years. But, uh, it's just, it rarely happens. You know, the, the crazy ROAS is usually gonna be seen at the smaller numbers because as you scale, 
you just start to care less about the direct margin. I think you make a lot more money when you just focus on still having a super healthy margin and then scaling the heck out of everything when you make sure you have a back end system in place. You gotta make sure your order fulfillment's handled, your customer support, everything else on the back end, otherwise it's gonna collapse. But truth be told, I don't care if it's a six, I don't care if it's a seven, I don't care if it's a four row as or a 20. You know, like obviously the higher the better, but it's not really like a main concern to say the least you know it's just one of those things is it super profitable cool do what we can to increase it and scale it i'm not you know upset if it's only a six and not a ten so i just wanted to put that out there hope this video made some sense hope it resonated with you if you're doing anything facebook ad or online advertising related especially in the e-commerce space because that's how most people drive their traffic myself included all right so if you have any questions we'll use this opportunity to open up the comment section down below let me know what that would be i can answer it in the next video no problem for you if you enjoyed this one smash a quick like down below again if you're interested in our advertising agency at all where we manage this for clients. We do about 30 to $50 million a year in total revenue for clients just through Facebook. So if you want to get some information on that, we have an inquiry form. Just fill it out. A couple simple questions. Top link in the description. You can also check out our drop shipping course as well as our Facebook advertising course that teaches you how to become a badass with Facebook ads. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.